Hello, everyone. Good morning. Today, my plan is to run a demonstration where I will highlight and show this bike crank, which will do a mesh convergence study on using a new tool called GPAD, Geometry Preserving Adaptivity, uh, which acts to adapt the mesh throughout the course of the analysis. Uh, now, I have already set the element order here to be linear uh, on the global mesh settings, uh, meaning that we don't have any mid side nodes in our elements. So uh, it will look a bit rough, the mesh, but it's just for demonstrational purposes as we uh, will look at the, the GPAD convergence uh, tool. So it's just sort of for demonstrational purposes. Uh, so let's generate the default mesh again for this one. And uh, as said, they are linear, the elements, so it's very coarse and it looks to be very faceted um, because of the lack of mid-side nodes. Uh, <clears throat> so the curvatures in the model is very um, poorly captured. Then we can also see we have some fine elements here. Uh, because of this uh, extruded text here on the shaft. And this text is just a design detail. So um, it doesn't serve any structural purpose, meaning that we don't really want our mesh to, to regard this feature. So just before we look at that GPAD tool, I just want to introduce you to a another new uh, tool that you have from the 23R1 release, and it's called Feature Suppress. Uh, <clears throat> so this is a very simple tool to use. I will scope it to this body. We have some settings um, to manually steer what to be uh, suppressed, etc. But the default uh, works very well here. So it will detect this detailed feature and when I generate the mesh again, it is no longer uh, honored by the mesh that printed text. So feature suppress is very efficient for just ignoring those details instead of actually going back to the cut to, to remove them. Um, okay, that was feature suppressed. Now let's move on to the, the G pad that I talked about. So geometry preserving adaptivity. That's inserted under the analysis. So insert uh, down here, geometry based adaptivity um, or geometry preserving adaptivity, G pad. Uh, they're called both things. Now G pad is similar to N lad nonlinear adaptive region, if you have used that before. Both of these, uh, again, are an adaptive uh, tool, which uh, adapts the mesh throughout uh, the course of the analysis. The difference is that um, NLAD works for nonlinear analysis, whereas GPAD, it only works for geometrically linear uh, analysis, meaning that you can't have large deflection on. If that is on, you can't insert a G-pad. So why then would you want to use G-pad? Uh, well, the power of G-pad is that it does the, um, the mesh refinement with respect to the original topology of your part, whereas NLAD uh, does the refinement sort of just within uh, the uh, original mesh. So it simply just refines the existing mesh, whereas GPAD actually adapts to the original topology. Um, and GPAD, as I will show you, can be used for conducting mesh convergence. Uh, it can also be, be helpful in a case where you have a very sort of complex uh, model with a lot of geometric uh, features and you're not really sure where to to refine the mesh. Um, 
it could also be a case where you have an analysis with multiple load steps and maybe you have like a higher load and you have a need for a finer mesh in in, in just um, a particular load step um, but for this case we'll do a mesh convergence study and it's a good practice to always do a, some sort of mesh convergence study of your model, meaning that you do some sort of sensitivity analysis on how your mesh size influences the results. Um, so the optimal mesh then would be one where your results don't change more than some minor percent um, when you refine the mesh, but you still want to keep it coarse enough uh, so that your solution times don't get too long. But let's set this up, how to do this convergence study with GPAD. So scoping, we'll select the entire body. So we allow for mesh refinement all over. Criterion, I will set to energy and it needs a, an energy coefficient. I'll set that to two. And what that means is that um, whenever an, a, the strain energy of an element surpasses, in this case, two times the mean strain energy of the elements uh, in the scoped part, then uh, it will be, the mesh will be refined in that area. So that's just the meaning of this energy criterion. Um, then uh, when should it do the mesh refinement? Well, um, we can say that it should be done a number of times within the load step. And we only have one load step. This is a linear analysis, meaning that it will be solved in one iteration. But I can... I can force it to take multiple sub-steps. Uh, I already had that uh, set, but by default, when you go in here in the analysis settings, the auto time stepping will be program controlled. But if you switch that to off, you can manually set the number of sub-steps that you want the load step to be broken down into. I have set it to five. So my linear analysis will be broken down into five sub-steps. And if I now in my G-pad set that I want the mesh refinement to be checked uh, four times within that load step, then uh, the idea is that uh, the first uh, sub-step will be solved with the default, the original mesh. And then the subsequent four load steps will be subjected to this mesh refinement based on the GPAD criteria. Um, so that's how to set this up. Oh, another detail here is that the force I am applying, in this case, I have a remote force acting here, and I have fixed this crank in the other end. Uh, this force I am applying um, sort of in a direct way. So it's not ramped, which is the default, meaning that every sub-step will be subjected to the same load since it's a linear analysis. Uh, so that will let us see how the results are influenced by the mesh, mesh size. And I have solved this one, of course, since previously, so I'll I'll open up that one. Now I have two uh, two analysis systems here. This first one has the G-pad applied in the exact same way as I just showed you. The mesh is also the same. And then in the second analysis, I have instead the NLAD. So if you remember, this uh, works for nonlinear analysis but it also works by just refining the existing mesh and it's set up also in the exact same way with the energy criterion and the same coefficient so let's have a look at the results for gpad to begin with 
we open up this graph a bit, we can see that the results uh, are changing based on the mesh, um, mesh size. And we can see in the table if the mesh has been changed or, or not, which, is has, which it has in the last four sub-steps. So we can get a sense of uh, what the converged result is, uh, what the value is, and also uh, sort of at what mesh refinement level uh, it, it is reached. And then if we animate this result, we can actually see, uh, see how the mesh is refined. And let's just zoom into some areas where we have a lot of curvature. And we can see that since it is doing the mesh refinement based on the underlying to geometry topology, you can see that the curvatures, maybe in this hole, it's captured better as the mesh is refined. Maybe especially here in this end here, we can see how the, the curvature is, is found as the mesh is refined. And next, if we instead look at the NLAD result, we have a slightly different difference in the results, uh, slightly difference or a convergence um, curve, you'd say. Um, and then if we animate it in the same way, have a look, we can see the effect of the fact that NLAD does the refinement just simply from the original mesh. So the elements are just sort of split and refined. So we don't sort of resolve the curvatures any better just because the mesh is refined. And especially here, the original facets are still sort of, they remain as we refine the mesh. So hence we have sort of a different original topology which uh, stays throughout the analysis and we get some difference in the results but again nlad works for for uh, completely non-linear um, analysis as well so that's gpad and i hope you got a sense of uh, that functionality and compared to nlad that's uh, all I had to share for my demonstrations.